hands for just a moment, would you mind? Because you live, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Power because you live. If you didn't come out of that grave, everything we've done this morning and for the last 30 years of my life would have been a waste. But because you walked out of that grave under your own power. Oh, Jesus. come today for a miracle I invite you right now just to lift one hand so that people around you know that I need a healing I need a miracle in my life in my body right now I need a miracle would you do that by faith we've already had tongues interpretation God already spoke to this wonderful congregation leave your hand in the air just for a moment in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke all pain. We rebuke every disease. We rebuke doubt and unbelief. We invoke the name of Jesus. We invoke the blood of Jesus. We desire and welcome the spirit of Jesus Christ in this place. And we ask in Jesus' name that you would address every need, every, every disease, every infirmity, Lord, every bondage, God, every circumstance, Lord, that has people, God, in prison spiritually or whether it be addictive-wise, God, we ask for deliverance. That's why you came, and we pray for that. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23. Thank you for all your kindness, all your kind comments. Regarding my birthday yesterday, I appreciate, I don't ever go to Facebook except now to check in. And when people say, have you checked Facebook lately? And uh, I'm like, no, I really haven't. But thank you for your kind words. Uh, uh, it meant a lot to me that you took the time to go on there and just wish me a happy day. And I appreciate that very much. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be pre preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ I've never preached or taught this before I want to preach on the subject more than blood more than blood Jesus we ask your name and your blood and your spirit upon this place. We ask that you would infiltrate this place. God, every mind, every heart, God, every dark cloud of confusion and fear, I pray that you would let your sunshine rise on every life today and that you would give hope. Lord Jesus, we have lilies here today representing the lily of the valley. Lord, you brought life where there was only death and we thank you for that today. Would you bring understanding we ask you today to touch us and help us to make the connection today, we pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, look at your neighbor, shake their hands, say, Happy Easter, and there's more than blood. <clears throat> My thanks to the, the ministry, thank you, <clears throat> the ministry that was here uh, on Friday, on Good Friday, ministering to our church body, those of the ministry, for the manly going out, ministering to people who couldn't make it to the house of God. That's what the church is all about. It's about serving, serving people. And so we are so thankful that 
that we have ministry that cares to that extent. Now, it says, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. Notice, notice the descending order. Spirit, soul, and body. The body is the least important. Yet we have a tendency to give it the most attention. <laughs> we want it to be comfortable and feel good and be at peace and safe. And we spend most of our time being attentive to the body, our body. And yet it's our soul that is eternal and it is the spirit where God is. He is a spirit and he is in the spirit. <clears throat> so that was just free. There's no charge for that one. But when we look at, he said, I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. We interact through all three of those elements. The body is the flesh, of course. That's the easy one. The bones, which gives man world consciousness. It's your body that interacts with the world. You, you, you get behind the wheel, and you put your hand on the wheel, and you put your foot on the gas, some of us more than others. Some of us way more than others. But the body of man has five senses. We can see and hear and touch and taste and smell, and it makes us aware of the world around us. <clears throat> we, we interact with all of those senses, and it's amazing that dust has been analyzed to have at least 96 elements which are also found in man. Amazing proof of creation. 96 elements so far that they found. When you pick up dust and you analyze it, it's you. <laughs> or somebody. Sometimes those little, those little balls of dust kind of collect under a bed, and, 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 and Sister Yance used to say, well, I looked under the bed, and either, somebody is either coming or going under there. <laughs> There's a half a person under there with all the dust. The soul and the spirit are way more difficult to analyze and I spent two and a half days trying to figure this out and I don't have all the answers but what I did find I'm going to share with you today the soul has been looked at and defined as the mind the will and the emotions that's the easy part and it really it gives man you think about it self-conscious self-consciousness the soul makes us conscious of ourself it is our mind our will and our emotions our body five senses interact with the world but our soul is aware of itself. It's our strong will. That's not our five senses. That's the will inside. That's the soul. And that makes us self-conscious. The Bible teaches in all sorts of scriptures that the soul contains our intellect, our thoughts, our reasoning, our emotions, our temperament. Yeah, that's in there. Feelings, attitudes, moods. You get to decide what kind of mood you're in. That's not part of the five senses. That's part of the soul. The soul says, I'm in a bad mood, and I'm going to make sure everybody in this room knows it. <clears throat> Most importantly, it houses our will, our choices, our decisions. The human will is the most powerful feature of the soul, for it has alone the power to determine your eternal destiny. Taste, hear, see has nothing to do with destiny. It's your soul that makes a decision and says, I will go to heaven. I will live for God. I will make it. Now, the Spirit gives man God consciousness. I know having a soul and a body before I came into a church like this, I was not alive spiritually, I can promise you. But the Spirit gives you God consciousness. I'm aware of the world. I'm aware of myself. But it's myself, the soul, that governs, that governs my body and tells my body what to do and what not to do until I come into contact with God. Then it becomes God consciousness. Notice in um, Genesis chapter 2, it says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Because of this connection, man became a living soul. If, if it says when God contacted dust, man became a living soul, that means that he was not before that. There is something that you are not 
until God comes into contact with you. There is something that is not alive until God comes into contact. You are, are a soul and you have a body, but there is no God connection. The human spirit is the breath of life which God breathed from himself. God breathed into man and he became a living soul. The dust of the ground refers obviously to man's body. The breath of life breathed into man's nostrils is his spirit. The living soul is man's soul. So we, we know by definition, by word. So a complete man is composed of spirit, soul, and body. But we have soul and body, and that kind of takes us into all sorts of directions, right, Jason? Takes us into lots of bad situations. When the soul has its way, and only its way, it governs the flesh, and it tells the flesh what to do, and gets you and I into all sorts of trouble. So according to the, spirit, the, the, the scripture that I just read, the soul came into being, or at least came to life, when the spirit was joined to the body. When the spirit entered the body, the living soul was produced. The body was dead, but when it came into contact with the spirit of life, something else was produced. It was a living soul. So now, if we think about that, without the spirit contacting or connecting with the dust in the body, the body is dead. Only with the spirit can one live. <clears throat> I'm trying to... I'm, I'm getting technical first to make this extremely simple. The Bible says that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Why? Because the spirit must separate from the sinful flesh. If the spirit separates, well, we know what happened when the spirit connected with the dust. It became a living soul. When the spirit disconnects, what happens? Something dies. That's why the Bible says the soul that sinneth, God cannot connect with sin. And because of that, when we sin, when we live a continuous sinful life, God must disconnect. And when the spirit that gave life to the living soul disconnects, the soul becomes dead. And the Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. No spirit, no life. I'll prove it. Job 33, 4 says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. John 4, 23, But the hour cometh. That means it's not here yet. Whoa, what do you mean? The hour, there is a time coming. The hour cometh when we're going to all have lunch. And I stand between you and lunch. I realize that. But if I say the hour cometh, there ain't nobody eating right now. Why? Because it's not here yet. <laughs> so when John said, the hour cometh, and now is, he's like, it's, it's coming, but it's like right here. And it says, when the true worshipers shall. I shall eat lunch. That means I'm not yet. It's something, he's talking about something, it's coming right now, but it hasn't happened yet. But he says, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. To worship the Father in truth is not enough. To worship in spirit is not enough. And it wasn't even available until then. He said, you're going to worship in spirit and in truth. Truth was available, but worshiping in spirit and truth. He said, there's coming a time, and it's happening right now. I'm fulfilling it right now, where true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. Notice it says, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24, he explains it. Well, well what does that mean? God is a spirit. That's what it says. God is a spirit. And they that worship him have the prerogative, multiple choice, if they want to. It says God is a spirit. Why did he say we have to worship him in spirit and truth? Because God is a spirit. It's, it really says the A there is not, uh, or the is, is it, it's God is spirit. Really, that's what it is. It's not us. He, he is spirit. And if we want to worship him, we must worship in spirit. Why? Because he is spirit and truth. We must worship him in spirit and truth. Mark 12, 29. Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
Verse 30, and we love, we love Deuteronomy 6, 4. God is one, right? But Jesus quotes that, and then he says this, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy religiosity. <clears throat> it says, you, will, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Wow. Not just understanding Acts 2.38, Deuteronomy 6.4, and John 7.37. And... No. What does it mean there? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. First of all, the main, the main uh, definition of heart is thoughts and feelings. You know, I love you with all my heart, my thoughts and feelings. Heart, soul, there, the, the most prominent parts of definition. I mean, it's like, it's like four pages. I'll just read that before lunch. Soul means basically breath, spirit, and life. That's really what soul means. Now, mind, mind, don't I think with my thoughts and feelings? Don't I think? But it really means deep thought. So when it says mind, deep thought. So don't just have shallow thoughts about your worship with God. Go deep in your thoughts. But it also means this, understanding. So the mind, when he says heart, thoughts and feelings, soul, breath, spirit, and life, I give my life in worship, and mind, deep thought, and understanding. But then he says, with your strength, which basically means ability, might, and strength. I'm going to worship God with all of my thoughts. I did it with vehemency. He says, with all of thy strength, ability, might, and strength, I'm going to worship. I'm going to love him. So the soul has the ability and the decision this is what I'm after. The soul has the ability and the decision to connect the physical and the spiritual. Our body, the realm of the spirit, in between you have your soul that says, oh, no, you're not. Or it says, oh, yes, you are. Your soul gets to tell, make the decision whether you are going to connect your body to the spirit. Spirit, soul, body. Remember the descending order? Your body is the least important. And it says, are you willing? <clears throat> I came to save your soul, not your body. God didn't come to save our body. He came to save our soul. But our soul is the determining factor that connects our current body with the realm of the spirit. It gets to decide. And that's what God is challenging every one of us today. Will your soul, will you allow your soul to connect your body, the one you're sitting in right now, with this realm of the Spirit. Genesis 2, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Notice this. For in the day, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, we know through, uh, you know, many, many, many readings and messages on the Garden of Eden. We know that when she took of the fruit and ate, she didn't like... She had at least enough time to give him some. And when he ate, he didn't fall over. What did they do? They hid from God. There was all sorts of things that happened. He lived to a ripe old age. I saw this morning on, on Yahoo that, that Miss Italian 117-year-old passed away. Well, Adam was way older than that, you know? So it's not just spaghetti that keeps us old, keeps us living a long life. Whatever they... Whatever God had for them in that garden was wonderful. But it says, in the day, in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. Well, if they didn't fall over dead instantly in that day, then God is either a liar or something else died. It wasn't their flesh that died instantly in the day. They ate and something had to die. What was it? Since they didn't die physically in the day, they must have died spiritually. What happened that would support that theory? God removed them from the garden. When they ate, God said, that's it. I'm moving you out. Part of the curse, I'm moving you out of this garden. What did the garden represent? It represented his presence. 
because he walked with them in the cool of the garden, in the cool of the day. Every day, he came walking with them and talking with them and had an incredible relationship with them. The presence of God, perfection was there. Innocence was there. A special close relationship with God was there in the garden. All of that, Adam and Eve lost that day. They were still alive, but they were kicked out of all of that. An unsaved person remains spiritually dead and needs to be born again of the Spirit, according to John 3 and 5. Why did Jesus say that? A man must be born again of water and spirit. Why? Because we're spiritually dead. He said, you were alive when you were born, but you're dead now because of sin. Sin has brought, your sinful nature has brought you to spiritual death again. You need to be born again. And people say, well, because I believe in Jesus, I'm born again. It's way more than that. You ask a woman that has had a child if it's just a thought process. You ask her if it's just, well, you know, now that I understand it, it's okay. There is a physical birth process that goes on that literally brings a woman most of the time to the point of death. And that's significant because when we are born in the Spirit, we ourselves are brought to the point of death through repentance. We say, I surrender my will to you. I give up my will to you. I'll die through giving my heart to you. We bring ourselves to that point of death. Why? So new life can come when we are born of the Spirit. It's more than a mental ascent. It's more than just a decision. It's a birth process that takes you. You come into contact with the travail pains of, of birth. You begin to shake and tears become, what's going on? You're getting born spiritually. It's way more than just an understanding. You speak to a baby in that womb and you say, hey, you want to be born today? Yeah, I think today's a good day. Doctors have told me the baby is at least as much involved as the mother in that birth. They're doing all sorts of things, getting ready, and they're saying, well, I, you know, they look at their watch and they say, okay, they have an eye watch. And they say, it's time, you know, it's, I, I want to eat some real food. But they're involved. Some people say, well, since Jesus went to the cross, that's enough for me. Oh, no. Oh, no. All you got to do is look at physical birth. It's the same in spiritual birth. You don't do that. He didn't do this on his own. He says, he says, I'm ready to let you be born. And the baby says, you know, it's time. I think I'm ready to be born. You get just involved as he does. What do you do? You repent. And you say, I'm sorry, which forgives you. Then you begin to worship and you give yourself to him. Your soul makes a decision. I will allow my my body to be connected with the spirit I will choose to live for him Woo! hallelujah hallelujah when a child is born it moves from one environment to a new environment I'll just serve God the way I always I'll just live the way I always live imagine a baby doing that at seven years old I just kind of like this environment in here. When we're born of the Spirit, we must change environments. We go, we go from one environment to a brand new. It's, a, it's just amazing that God said old things will be passed away. Behold, all things will be made new. Something miraculous, something incredibly spiritually powerful happens when you cross from, an, from the physical environment to the spiritual environment. You are awakened to a new realm, the realm of the spirit that you didn't ever know before. Why? Because you were dead. But Jesus has the CPR paddles right now. He's about ready to jolt somebody in this place and come alive. I'm calling you out of the grave. Woo! Ha! When a person is saved, when a person is saved, everybody listen to me right now. When you're saved, he keep, it's a, his soul keeps the body in subjection to the spirit. That's what salvation is. I'm going to decide to keep my body in subjection to his spirit. I'm going to choose to do that. First, First Corinthians says, but Paul writing, but I keep under my body 
and I bring it into subjection. <laughs> He's got it in a headlock. Well, you know, it's just not that hard for me to live for God. Well, you're, then, then you're not living for God the way that the Bible says, because Paul was way more spiritual than any of us, and he said, I keep in this. He's got that old body in a headlock. You will pray. You will help God. You will live. I keep in subjection. That's the soul that says, you will live for God. You will get out of that bed and pray. You will come to church. You will read your... Ugh. But I don't want it. Yes, you will. You think it's easy for me? I've got to grab that old... Get over here and come over and pray. Because I want to go to heaven. I want to leave this body behind. I don't like this, but I want to go... Woo! Hallelujah. Ha! Ah, heaven is a wonderful place. You don't want to miss heaven. Hallelujah. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Watch. Lest that by any means. When I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. He said, I realize if I let this guy go. <laughs> Do you hear what he's saying? If this guy gets away from me, I could lose my soul. I could lose out with God. It needs to be that important for every single person here today. Being saved, being saved is not a denomination. It's making a decision, first of all. I will, I will do this. But it doesn't stop there because I've seen a lot of people make a decision and then tomorrow it falls apart. It's more than just a decision. Notice, this, this blew me away. Death, burial, and resurrection. Paul said, I know nothing except that Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. Notice this. Death brought blood. Blood takes care of your soul. How do I know? Because the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. If sin <clears throat> is what, what separates you from God, <clears throat> then getting the sin out of the way literally restores your soul. So death brings blood, blood takes care of the soul, and the soul is brought back to life when we let the blood be applied. Watch, death, burial takes care of the body. So we've got the soul being taken care of. Burial takes care of the body. When Jesus died on the cross, they took him and they put him in the grave. When we are baptized, we are buried with him in baptism because when, when we repent and we, get, and we have his blood come on us, then, we, then our soul is taken care of. But then we are buried to continue wiping away all of the sin on our record. And we are buried with him. It takes care of the body. But watch this. Holy Ghost takes care of your spirit. He said, a new, Ezekiel says, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. Why? Because the old one ain't good enough. The old one still let you get into trouble. The old one didn't control your soul to the extent it was ready for heaven. The old spirit didn't want the things of God. But he said, I'll fix that. I'll put a new one in you. You know, if your starter goes out on your car, you don't say fix it. You say, put a new one in for me. I want this thing to get off the ground. We do the same thing. God says, that old spirit, it's not good enough. You're going to find yourself failing day after day after day. It's because the old one was never intended to get you there. It's the new one. I will put a new spirit within you. Spirit provides power to overcome. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You don't have power until the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So what do we have? Death, burial, and resurrection. Blood, burial for the body, and spirit that replaces the old spirit. It rejuvenates. So what do we have? We have the whole picture. When Jesus went to the cross, some people say, well, thank God for the blood. The, the cross brought the blood. It's like Jesus visited Red Cross and said, here, take some blood. It was way more than blood, folks. It was his spirit. It was his body. And it was the blood. 
Do you realize that the rapture, when he blows that trumpet, shouts that the rapture will eventually take care of our flesh forever? If the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, then the spirit that raised him from the dead shall also make alive, quicken your mortal body by his spirit, which is in you. Believing is not enough. The spirit is what brings us back to life. We need the blood. We need his body and we need his spirit. (laughs) Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Because he gave it all. Let me just summarize. We need it all. We can't be picky eaters when it comes to spirit. Spiritual things. We can't say, well, I like this, but I don't like that. He gave it all. So we have to receive it all. What did he give? He gave his body. He gave his soul, and he gave his spirit. Yes, he did. Watch. Body, Isaiah 53. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He gave his body He didn't just give his blood. There's more than blood going on here, folks. He gave his body that you might be healed, that you might be delivered. It wasn't the blood on the cross that delivers. It wasn't the blood on the cross that heals. It was the blood at the scourging post that heals us with his stripes. It didn't say with the cross you're healed. With the stripes on his back, you're healed. He gave his body. More than blood. More than blood. He gave his soul in verse 11 through 12. He shall see, this is prophecy about the crucifixion. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. He gave his body. But he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors it amazes me that in Matthew chapter 26 Jesus refers back to scripture when he says then saith he unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful or exceeding sorrowful even unto death He was talking about the prophecy in Isaiah. He was saying, this is it. I'm pouring out my soul. Do you realize that he prayed so hard that sweat like with great drops of blood was falling? That is a medical condition when somebody is under extreme stress. Blood can come out of your forehead with the sweat. That's what was happening to our Jesus. What was he doing? He said, I've given my body and now I'm giving my soul because somebody needs life in this house. I'm giving it all to you. I gave you my body for healing. I'm giving you my soul for life. And then in Luke 23, verse 46, it says, When Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having thus said, he gave up the ghost. He gave his body. He gave his blood. He gave his spirit. He gave everything. He gave his soul to us. And when we look in, you don't have to go there, but John 19, it says Jesus gave up his spirit, which the word is pneuma, to the Father. And in the same gospel in John chapter 10, it says Jesus gave up his life. It's different. It's suke for the sheep. So he gave his spirit, but he also gave his life. I thought life was spirit. It's slightly different. Matthew 20, it says he gave his suke, his life as a ransom. So these words are not the same. The spirit pneuma is the outbreathing of God into the creature. God gives life to all creatures. He gives that breath of life into creatures. Now watch. The life principle derived from God. That's what 
the research said. It's a life principle. God gives life. But the soul, suke, is man's individual possession. That which distinguishes one man from another. God didn't give you and I the same life. He gave us individual life. Just because you die doesn't mean I die. You understand? So the pneuma, watch this. The pneuma, which is like the wind, the original life, of, or the life principle, it was surrendered to the Father in death, but his suke was surrendered himself. His individual life was given as a ransom for many. So watch, his life was given for sheep. What's the main difference between those two? The best I can figure is God gave his spirit the pneuma life principle. God gave life. But watch this. The other one, suke, humanity chose to give. God gave life, but Jesus in his flesh as a human being said, I'm not going to give the life principle only. I'm going to make a decision to give my life. I'm going to give my life. It's something that we give. It's a personal decision of ours. Numa, P-N-E-U-M-A, and suke different words. Ephesians 2 says, and you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to, wow, who's he talking about? Somebody that's really not a very nice person. According to the prince and the power of the air. <clears throat> you let the devil tell you what to do? Yep. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. If we're disobeying the word of God knowingly, we are being influenced, governed by the prince and power of the air. And there ain't two. <laughs> There's only one. Among whom also we had all our conversation or lifestyle in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. Man, these people need to be in jail. You're right. Even as others, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ. We, what else quickens? What, how does God quicken us? He already told us. By his spirit which is in you. If you don't have the spirit, you're not quickened. If you're not quickened, then you go according to the soul which is motivating the flesh. The lust of the flesh. The soul will tell the flesh to do all sorts of things. You want a list? Look in Galatians. All these things won't make it to heaven. All the huge list. One guy said, man, it'd be better if I didn't know some of this stuff. I don't want to, I'd rather be ignorant than know that, that the things that I'm doing right now won't get me there. I won't go through the list. Everyone say praise God. <laughs> so we need his body. His body is the church. We need the church. This was a revelation. I knew that it's important to come to church. The Bible says every time the, the, the doors are open, forsake not the gathering together of the saints. We're supposed to be here. But when I saw this, that he gave his body, if he gave it, then we need it. How do we get his body? The church is the body of Christ. Look it up. If the church is the body and we need the church, then we need to be here. We need the body. <clears throat> it was a fresh revelation to me. We need his soul, his life. Paul said, it is not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. I, if, if, if I'm going to kill this old man, then something else better raise me to, to life. And it says his life, the soul is life. We need his spirit. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's not my words. It's the word of God. What is he saying that for? Because if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, what is the Spirit of Christ? The Spirit of God. If you don't have it, then your soul is left to do whatever it wants to do. There's no multiple choice option. All the soul has is the flesh. But if you give it the power of the Holy Ghost, then the soul has a decision to make. I will allow the Spirit to lead me. Walk in the Spirit. 
so that you don't fool. Uh oh. Walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That means there is a choice. If I don't walk in the spirit, I will fulfill the lust of the flesh. I need, if I don't have this option, then all I have is option this one. I want a second option in my life. That's why the power of the Holy Ghost. Richard Bach said, when he said, what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. It may seem to us like the end, but to the master, it's a glorious new beginning. We hold on to life. We hold on to everything we're familiar with. But this is what I want to do. You want to do it because you're in the flesh. But I'm telling you, when I got the Holy Ghost, I want to come to church. I want to pray. When I'm in the Spirit, I love to pray. I love to read His Word when I'm in the Spirit. It's when we get in the flesh that it resists us. And then the soul needs to say, well, I know flesh where you took me. And I don't want to go there, so I'm going to let the Spirit. Then you pray and you repent until the Spirit takes over. And when the Spirit takes over, you're safe. You're saved again because the Spirit will teach you, you need to repent. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost when you walk in the Spirit. Would you stand with me today? Since the initial sin of Adam and Eve. I can't believe we finished on time. Since the initial sin of Adam and Eve, every human being has come into this world with a spiritual birth defect. Every one of us. Husbands, don't look at your wives and say, see, I told you. (laughs) Don't do that. It's like a hole in the heart, only worse. It's a hole in our soul. In a lifetime, we're likely to spend thousands and thousands of hours and dollars trying to fill that hole, plug the gap that exists between us and the relationship with God that we're really looking for. For most of us, we don't even realize it's what we need, so we keep looking, trying, experimenting, and failing. It's because your soul doesn't stand a chance without the power. Today is resurrection day. That's what I'm talking about. Your soul is left to the wolves unless you have the power of the Holy Ghost, resident and in control. If it's not, you're going to be led like a lamb to the slaughter. What am I talking about? It's really this simple. Jesus, to, to, what, what is being saved? Give God your earthly life and he will give you his eternal life. It's simple. I give you this. Whatever I have left, from today, but, but I'm, I'm 56. Isn't it too late? If you choose today and you die tomorrow, as long as you follow his word between now and then, you're good. Lord, I choose. He'll give us eternity. Do you have any idea what that's like? I've said it before, it's like a slow flying or a slow walking turtle picking up one grain of sand on the East Coast, walking across the United States, dropping that piece of sand off on the beach, turning around and going all the way back to the East Coast, picking up another grain of sand, walking all the way across the United States and dropping off two and saying, could I have a drink? I'm kind of thirsty, it's been a long time. Imagine that happening, and once he gets all the sand on the east coast transferred to the west coast, then he takes all, then he starts over and he does it all again. And it happens 155 million, billion, zillion, trillion, kabillion times. That's how long eternity is. And yet, what is our focus on? The body, which has maybe 117 years. God said 70, 80 if you're lucky, and the average is right in between right now. God, our souls are in jeopardy. Souls that will spend eternity not transferring grains of sand, but either 
in eternal torture or eternal paradise. There's no middle ground. There's no fence. Jesus, your resurrection spirit is here to raise. You told Martha, you said, are you kidding me? You're worried about healing if I could have just been here two days ago, four days ago. I could have stopped Lazarus from dying. You don't understand. I can stop somebody from dying. I can heal somebody's body, but I can raise them from the dead. I've got the power to do anything you need. Lord, there are so many situations here today. Desperate. Let's not just be negative, God. There are situations that people are fighting with the anointing of God. They're saying, I'm just going to keep running and waiting. Because I know that if I say yes, that it's going to cost me something. Let today be yes. If you need a healing or you need the Spirit of Christ in you today, or you don't know whether you have it, I, I urge you, I invite you right now to come to the altar. If you need a healing in your body, and there's going to be lots of people, so you better come quick. Get closest to the fire, so to speak. Step out in faith right now. Let your faith be yes. Don't let it be, well, I don't know. The longer you wait, the more you're saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Just come, just come quickly. <clears throat> Pastors, I need you to come. I need you to pray with these people real quick. Just ask them a question. Are you here for healing or are you here for Holy Ghost? I need, I need to know right now. <clears throat> There's all sorts of other stuff out there. But for now, for right now, just for a few moments, would you just acquiesce and lift your hands as a sign of blessing to these people that have said through their actions, I need God or I need healing. Lift your hands toward them and pray for them right now as the body, because folks, we need the body. The body is so powerful. The body is here. Jesus left in body, but the church is still here. The church is supposed to have his power. We pray in the spirit. That's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray for these people in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, pastors, pray for these people. In the name of Jesus, we take dominion over every disease. We take dominion. God, we ask you today to assist the soul. The souls are crying out right now. They're saying, I don't want to be attached only to flesh anymore. I want a choice. I want a choice to be in the spirit. I want this choice. Oh, God, I want to be healed. I want to be healed right now, God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if you've got another need while these people are praying, I just wanted the desperation. If you need something from God, I encourage you to come. If your marriage is falling apart, if you're addicted to something, you want to be delivered, press your way through the crowd. That's what the woman with the issue of blood did. She said, I don't care who you are. I need to get close to him. I'm not afraid of what people think about me. I'm not, I don't care if they think I need something. Just press your way to the front. Just say, excuse me, I need to get to the altar. I need to get to the, I want to be set free today. I've got cancer. I've got back pain. My my, my vertebrae are going to have to be fused together. I've got diabetes. I've got problems. I've got, I've got bone problems. I've got kidney problems. I've got all sorts of problems. I've got arthritis in my body. Press your way to the front and say, come on, preacher, pray for me. Let the body come to you. If you have no idea what to do, just come anyway and say, man, there's something powerful in this place right now. I want to experience it. I want to experience it. I invite all of you. Just come. Just come. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to trample you over. We're just going to pray. We're going to pray with you. There's something powerful. His resurrection spirit is here right now as we worship. As we worship. If there's nothing that you need, I, pr I ask you, would you just lift your hands in worship as we continue to worship the Lord and create an atmosphere, create an atmosphere in which Jesus feels very comfortable moving in, 
You never know. Somebody may get the Holy Ghost in the back seat. Who knows? Just worship. Just worship and let him. Lord, my soul, my mind, will, and emotions is choosing. It's choosing to let you come close to me. My soul is going to make a choice to connect the body with the Spirit. I'm going to make a decision. Make that decision today. I surrender to you, Jesus. I surrender. That's it. Let's fill. Come on, worshipers. Let's fill this place with worship right now. Fill it with miraculous. Fill it with upscale worship today. Oh, Rabbo Oh, worship you, Jesus. That's it. When you clap your hands, when you speak in tongues, you're directing, you're directing him. The Bible says that the tongue is like the bridle of a horse or the, the rudder of a ship. When you allow yourself to speak in tongues, it's leading you right into that realm of the spirit. Allow it to happen. You'll lead yourself right to a miracle. You'll lead yourself right to a spiritual deliverance if you'll let it happen. Hallelujah. Let a, let a decision be made. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> 